Hi. <laughs> so it feels like it's been a while and I apologize for that. I felt like maybe last month I was on a really good roll with putting out videos several times a week. I was watching a lot. I had a lot of good things to say about different types of shows. On one hand, it's a little bit unfortunate that I kind of fell off the bandwagon, but on the other hand, it's because I was doing some really wonderful things in my own personal life. So YouTube is just a hobby for me. So if I can't make a video once a week, you know, if, if things come up, YouTube is what I'm gonna push to the side at this point. I, but you know, I went camping for five days. So obviously I wasn't watching K-dramas while I was out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and then before that, I had gone to New Orleans and then first week of June, I'm going to Mexico. So there's gonna be a little bit of time in here where you're not gonna see me very often. I might try and edit some more travel videos and have those scheduled to come up. But it is what it is. I, I'm gonna try harder once I get back from Mexico to get back into a routine. Because I haven't watched much, I don't have anything to review. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about one or possibly two or more shows that I think have a similar quality and then give you a recommendation based on if you enjoyed those shows to go and watch this show, which could be on the same level or better, in my opinion. Our first chunk of shows are City Hunter, The K2, and Man to Man. City Hunter aired in 2011, and it is about a covert mission that goes awry, and the sole survivor of this covert operation spirits away the son of one of his fallen comrades takes him off into like the middle of nowhere to train him to be like a deadly machine basically. <laughs> now that I think about it, it kind of sounds a little bit like Kill It. And now once this boy who was kidnapped is a grown man, he goes back to South Korea to enact their plan of revenge. And there he gets kind of entangled with a female security guard who has a similar mindset to his. Next was the K2, and the K2 is about a, a top level security guard, extremely good at what he does, who is tasked to protect a politician's secret daughter and also to uncover sort of corruption. Lastly, we have Man to Man, which follows a secret agent whose target is a actor, a very, very popular actor, and his struggle to kind of get what he needs from this actor while tiptoeing around his surprisingly skilled manager, if that makes any sense. Now, all of these shows have very similar things in common. They involve a man who is very skilled in like the martial arts, espionage, or beating people senseless or being sneaky. So they all have that in common and then they all get involved with a woman one way or another, whether it's that's their mark or not, or they fall in love when they should be falling in love. You know, they all have a very similar premise like that. But my true recommendation, if you liked any of those shows, is Healer. I do not believe that I have seen or thought of a more perfect synopsis of Healer than the Wikipedia synopsis. So I'm gonna read it for you. A decade old incident involving a group of five friends who run an illegal pro-democracy broadcasting station during the Fifth Republic of South Korea brings together three different types of people. An illegal night carrier night cur courier courier an illegal night courier with the code name healer who possesses top-notch fighting skills a reporter with a second-rate tabloid news website and a famous journalist at the major broadcasting station in trying to uncover the truth from the 1992 incidents they grow into real, honest reporters. Well, City Hunter has some really great action, and the K2 has 
deliciously dynamic female characters and man to man has a lot more of the funnies. Healer is the complete package. Healer's plot and character development is truly wonderful. It is the only K-drama I have watched three times. <laughs> It has memorable characters. I watched this years ago, probably a good five years ago, and I always think about it, and I always think about the characters and their growth and the relationships and the romance that gives me all of the ooey gooey feelings. And in my opinion, Healer is one step above all of the other three. If you watch City Hunter, The K2, and Man to Man, and you enjoyed them or like mildly enjoyed the premise, say the premise sucked you in but you weren't very impressed with it, if you liked those, please give Healer a chance. I do not think you'll be disappointed. That was the first recommendation I have for you. The second one I think might make you scratch your head <laughs> and that is That Winter the Wind Blows and Legend of the Blue Sea. On paper, they really have almost nothing in common. That Winter the Wind Blows is about a con man who pretends to be a blind heiress's lost brother and the truly wonderful trash soap opera romance that unfolds. I have not finished That Winter the Wind Blows, I believe on an episode around episode 10 or whatnot. Legend of the Blue Sea is like this coming of age story about a mermaid who comes to land to find her true love. On paper, they have nothing in common. But while I watch That Winter the Wind Blows, I am constantly reminded of the male lead within The Legend of the Blue Sea because both of these male leads have very similar temperaments. They both are like super hyper masculinity in that very traditional gender norms way. Borderline problematic controlling-ish. And both of the romances within these two very different shows have a similar dynamic to them, but I am warning you right now <laughs> that that winter the wind blows is trash garbage. Just have fun with it. Don't hate me for re recommending it to you. I know it's trash. Uh. <laughs> Next I have for you Age of Youth or Hello My Twenties and My First First Love. Now both shows follow a group of young people who are smushed together, living together, and them dealing with these very coming of age struggles like their first romantic relationships and juggling friendship and you know, etc. Also with um, My First First Love, I was reminded of The Best Hit. Um, the Best Hit is also a co-living type story, but the reason why I would compare those two together, not involving Hello My Twenties or Age of Youth, is because they share a musical element. Bo in both shows, there is a character or characters who are pursuing a career within the arts and struggling within that career and trying to decide if that dream is still worth pursuing. Lastly, I have She Was Pretty and My Idea is a Gangnam Beauty. She Was Pretty is about a woman who was considered very beautiful as an adolescence, but as she grows up, her hair becomes frizzier, her complexion goes a little bad, she starts to resemble more of her father's characteristics. She is reconnected with a childhood friend who is the complete opposite of her, who was a chubby youth. Not that that means that you're ugly, just, uh, yeah. <laughs> but he comes back from being overseas and now he has brought up in his height, making him slimmer and, you know, much more handsome or traditionally handsome, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, whenever I talk about like beauty standards and stuff, I feel like I really have to tip my tiptoe around myself. And it's themes that definitely cross over with My Idea is a Gangnam Beauty. My Idea is a Gangnam Beauty is about a freshman in college who, after high school, had extensive plastic surgery to the point where her own father doesn't even recognize her. And now, instead of being the an ugly person, she now has a new label of 
Gangnam Beauty, which as far as I understand is a derogatory term for someone who has had a lot of plastic surgery and come out very cookie cuttery. <laughs> so yeah, both of these shows deal with self-confidence and self-love and the societal beauty standards. Another show that involves that, which I just thought about, is Weightlifting Fairy. I did not love this show as much as other people did, but you know, it's about the female weightlifter and her first real relationship and dealing with self-image and body love and all that stuff. Yeah, so if you liked one of those, I definitely suggest giving the other one a chance. And uh, for a bonus, specifically with My Idea is a Gangnam Beauty, if you like webtoons or comics, I would highly suggest webtoon. Can you see that? And looking up True Beauty. I love it. It's hilarious. The art style is freaking wonderful. Maybe I'll do a complete other video talking about the webtoons that I've discovered within the last three months. If you like my ideas of Gangnam Beauty, definitely go check out True Beauty. It's about a high schooler who can completely transform her face with makeup and how that changes how her peers react and greet her. Okay, so those are my recommendations and I have a question for you guys. I'm in the mood for a historical romance thing. So if you can give me a recommendation based off of Master of the Mask, something with a good romance, not saying that I think Master of the Mask has a particularly good romance, but it's in there and a great villain. Master of the Mask has a wonderful villain. What's another? Have I really not watched that many historical dramas? Help me out. Recommendations down below. All right. Have a good night. Have a good day. And said that backwards. Whenever I say it backwards, my brain just stops and it's like, uh... anyways, bye.